Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is the workshop on tidy transcriptomics, focused mostly on single cell, uh, but also bulk RNA. Um, I encourage you, if you can, to participate. Uh, also, show your face if it's possible, but I'm not sure if your camera uh, is allowed to be on. But nonetheless, interacting the chat is very early here, so is um, you know, job of everybody to keep me awake. Uh, so you can ask question whenever. I will try to read the chat every now and then, although the chat will be mostly hidden, but I will, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I will try to, to have a look. So um, I will start, well, um, first of all, let me ask the first question. Who of you is keen to actively reproduce the code as I speak and to do? There are a couple of exercises as we have some time to spend today. Uh, so there is also opportunity to do a couple of very um, uh, easy exercises. So good joy. Um, so as we are not so many, uh, if each of you could say either yes or no, whether they will follow along with the hands-on coding. All right. I assume from this small sample that roughly 50% will follow along. So um, for the people who want to follow along, it's very easy. Um, so I will send you a couple of links. Um, this workshop is online and it has also a render website uh, along with it. So I will pass in the chat the, the GitHub um, repository. So this work, workshop is in our package, so you can install and all dependencies will be dealt to you for you. So inside this um, homepage of the GitHub, there is the package installation. So uh, it's pretty easy. Um, I mean, here there are the exact uh, version of software, but um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's the one that we actually have now. Uh, so I believe, well, um, let's, let me suggest to you, um, let me see one second. I think I'm sharing the, ah, here we go, I wasn't even sharing. Um, here you go. Yes. Um, so you can see here, um, I suggest to you to install these four software versions should take not so long. And uh, this is the installation of the workshop itself. Uh, and I, I will do a brief introduction. So you have time to, uh, for this code to be executed on your computer. Okay, so I will, um, and you can browse the vignettes, but uh, I will tell you how to open the vignette yourself so you can uh, execute the R markdown. All right, so uh, let me give you an introduction on Tadi Transcriptomics. So uh, if you go to the GitHub and uh, you, um, let me see, uh, um, under syllabus, there is the material web page that will bring you basically to this website uh, of which, so if you just um, want to have a look or um, go to the material in, in a later stage, uh, you can access this web page and all the coding will be there for you and the presentation as well. All right, so let me ask another question. Uh, how many of you have ever done single cell analysis, RNA sequencing analysis? You can type yes or no. Mm. 
okay. Um, not single cell, no, actually, the majority did not. All right. Um, not single cell. So, okay, let me ask another question. How many of you have done RNA sequencing analysis at all? Hmm. Okay. Um, good. So the majority, if not all, have some familiarity with RNA sequencing, but not single cell. Uh, and let me ask the last question for the time being. How many of you, let's say, are familiar or um, routinely, so you can either respond familiar or routinely, program with tidyverse? Always, okay, good. Probably this is the um, most important thing if you want to try to do some exercises that are there. Um, so the, um, just as uh, is, um, is um, explaining the, in the GitHub on page. So let me state the goal of this workshop. So the goals of these workshops is to show you how you can perform RNA sequencing analysis, both bulk and single cell, through the tidyverse ecosystem. Yeah, it's not so much to teach you how to do single cell analysis, although you see some examples here, or how to how is the perfect way to use uh, tidyverse. Okay, so this is not teaching you the foundation necessary. Uh, although you will see something here, it's I'm not coding to show you the best way to do the analysis necessary. Okay, uh, so that's not the goal. The goal is to show you the interface uh, between these two, um, between uh, the, the the biology and the methodology. Uh, and I will uh, show you how you can use some tools we have developed to achieve that. All right, um, let me introduce what, uh, what the concept is of tidy transcriptomics. So uh, these slides are available in, in the web page I just passed in the chat. So we have a couple of resources for tidy transcriptomics. For, for, first of all, we have a lot of workshops that are in the same, um, let's say GitHub um, account uh, that this workshop is. Uh, we also have a blog uh, so we on, on which we have the Tidy Transcriptomic Manifesto, which explains the principle that we are following and our goals. Also, uh, we have a couple of um, papers out that, that show um, in more detail, study bulk, which is a um, analysis framework, a tidy analysis framework for bulk RNA, and uh, tidy surat, uh, which also goes into more details, technical details about what I will show you today. Okay, so um, what? Let me make this bigger. Um, what are the principles of uh, tidyverse or tidy R? So tidy, tidy, um, the tidy programming is, uh, let's say, a philosophy or a way to, to program uh, that involves some principle and also a software ecosystem, as you might know, which is called tidyverse, that allow you to follow these principles. Uh, those principles are reuse existing data structure. One of the main data structures uh, is the data frame that uh, tidyverse uses. Uh, compose simple functions with the pipe, um, embrace functional programming, and design for humans. And these are also the principles we follow when we developed the tidy transcriptomic ecosystem. Um, just to give you an idea, although most of you for sure know this, uh, this is a typical data frame. Uh, which is rendered um, and, um, well, 
is, is rendered here as a table, which is a more powerful and um, clear, pretty, if you, if you will, uh, version of the data frame, but behaves exactly the same. So this data frame has um, observation as rows and variables as columns. And these variables could have um, different um, nature. For example, it could be a simple character. It could be a list, for example, in, uh, containing a, a plot. It could be another table. Uh, for example, if you want to do iterative analysis, you could group, uh, I will show you later on, it's called nesting. Uh, to have a, each variable being a table and applying an operation on all the rows here. It could be a linear model. And it can also uh, can be um, single cell data containers. Okay, so it could basically include anything you can imagine. And um, this data frame is becoming more powerful now. So it's almost like a database. Uh, where we have the relations between a lot of variables. So um, what is the big picture of tidy transcriptomics? Uh, tidy transcriptomics is a software suite, um, a little bit you can imagine as tidyverse, which includes many packages. And uh, at the moment, includes um, three packages and um, we are now expanding to, I believe a total of five, including spatial data and multi-asset data and so on. At the moment, these, um, these um, ecosystem includes a tidy bulk, uh, which is an analysis um, infrastructure tool, uh, which follow tidy principles for bulk RNA sequencing. Also for bulk, bulk you, we uh, implement a tidy summarize experiment, which allow you to interact to summarize experiment uh, as, if they, as if they were uh, data frames. So applying all the tidy manipulation um, that uh, tidyverse offers. And um, of course, now this summarize experiment can interact with this analysis framework tidy bulk, uh, and for single cell, we uh, have developed tidy single cell experiment and tidy surat, which allow you to display and manipulate single cell experiment and surat object in the same way. So with the same grammar, there are not, uh, let's say, um, container specific grammars and uh, also uh, very similarly to tidy summarize experiment visualization and also make uh, allow the single cell experiment and Surat now we to interact with tidyverse. Of course, as I will show you later on, these objects, these containers are not touched, so uh, they can interact with whatever they were interacting before, namely by conductor and Surat. Today, I will mostly show you how to perform single cell analysis using this tidy transcriptomics, but I will also touch with tidy bulk uh, through a pseudo bulk analysis, uh, which I will explain later as well. Um, all right, so just an introduction on um, how the these containers are originally displayed and how and we can uh, manipulate and what does it change when we import our libraries. Uh, for example, um, for who is not familiar with single cell, um, single cell data, such as bulk data, is quite complex, has uh, abundance information, metadata for genes and samples and so on. So when we display this object uh, on the screen, we see a summary. So we're saying that the single cell experiment with such cells and such uh, features. Uh, this has the assay, so the uh, variables containing the abundance, uh, the transcriptomic abundance, such as uh, in this case, row counts and log counts, so on and so forth. I mean, you can have an idea here. Uh, similarly, for Surat, we get a little lighter summary um, with the number of features, assays, and so on. 
So how we can analyze these um, containers? Well, for the, by, for the single cell experiment, which, which is part of Biconductor, we have all the software that the Biconductor community contributes to this repository. Uh, and uh, it, the software is mostly designed to interact with these um, Biconductor containers. So we can use different software and use them together, ideally in a seems like, seamless way, so, such as in Scran and Scatter that are uh, common and popular packages. Um, for Surat, um, we have the um, Surat software itself and uh, some Surat wrappers that are community contributed software. Uh, how about data manipulation? So what about if we want to modify this container, filter this container, merge containers, so on and so forth. So each uh, of these container has grammar specific manipulation. For example, if we want to see me the metadata, we do call data on one and data double brackets on the other. If we want to capture, so to print on screen and use some reduced dimensions such as PCA or UMAP, uh, we use reduced themes uh, or embeddings for the two containers. We can subset uh, the data set, so filter based on, uh, based on uh, metadata columns, for example, in a similar way, uh, but um, single cell experiment requires double commas here. Uh, we can visualize um, metadata information pretty easily um, if we want to do sim uh, simple operations, such as um, add the column info to the metadata. You can say we can do it in the similar way. Uh, but if we want to do manipulation that start to be more complex, such as in real world analysis, then the grammar is not consistent anymore. Let's say we have our container, a table of uh, clinical information for some cells, let's say a cell comes from a patient uh, with a certain disease. Um, and then we want, we want to select the cells for which clinical information is available, okay? Uh, so in this case, we can take the data, um, we can uh, see bind this uh, table, and we need to, uh, to match the, for example, the sample column in our table and in our data to of course, make sure that the merging um, is, uh, is correct. And then we can apply subset uh, functionality, a subset function to filter uh, the sets for which sample ID is present, for example. Um, on the other hand, uh, in Surat, uh, the metadata is a data frame, so we can use tidyverse on that. However, not see, oops, however, um, not seamlessly as we uh, need to do a couple of operations to achieve this. For example, we can update the metadata um, doing a left join on our data. Uh, but in this case, we can simply match by sample automatically. Uh, but then anyway, we have to subset in a separate operation, for example. So these two, again, are not completely similar. Um, what happens when we import library tidy single cell experiment or tidy surat? Um, when we import these libraries, then we when we print these objects uh, on screen, they appear uh, in a, in a, with a similar structure. They appear as a data frame where the cell metadata and reduced dimensions are displayed for us. Uh, you can see here we have a header with some uh, summary information, such as this is a single cell experiment, this is a surat, and we have uh, these features, these assays, and so on, and this amount of cells. Um, and now we don't only visualize this as a data frame, but we can interact, modify, filter, merge, join this data set as if they were data frames, and the underlying objects will be updated according to, the, to that. So basically it's an abstraction layer uh, to those objects that allow to, to be uh, uh, manipulated with tidyverse. Now, how does it look uh, for the analysis? 
uh, well, for the analysis, nothing changes because these object, these packages uh, are not for single cell are not analysis packages are just manipulation. So you keep analyzing your data as you were before. And uh, how about the manipulation? Where in this case, not only the uh, display uh, is consistent, but also the grammar is consistent. So as you can see, you can apply the exact same code to these two objects, and you will, will you will, will obtain the same effect. For example, for visualizing metadata, we can simply print uh, the object on screen as the metadata is exposed to us uh, to start with. Uh, to select some reduced dimension, we can just use select command and use the powerful um, evaluations here. We can select all columns containing UMAP. Um, how about filtering um, the functions before that was called subset? We can just use filter based on arbitrary combination of columns. How can we mutate? Uh, so add, for example, a column to our data set. We can just use mutate in this way. And in the, the example I've, I um, mentioned before, where we have a clinical um, data frame and our object, we want to merge the two and select the cells for which the clinical information is available. Uh, there are these powerful join operators, such as inner join, that do these two um, jointly in a way, so together. So we join based on sample and we filter uh, implicitly the cell that have uh, this match. Um, so that's a bit of an introduction of what these packages do. Um, we, these packages introduce a wide range of uh, functions of operators. Uh, from um, dplyr, tidyr, ggplot, and plotly for um, for uh, interactive plots. Um, so uh, you have you have a quite uh, um, wide range of options that uh, some of those will be shown in this workshop. Uh, so uh, to conclude this introduction, introductory uh, presentation, I want just to clarify what these. Um, packages are and what are not. So uh, the packages I showed you here, which are tidy surat and tidy single cell experiment are not data containers. So the data containers are the underlying surat and single cell um, and are not analysis tools, are just adapters that allow you to use tidyverse on these objects. So are just data interfaces which allow manipulation, integration, and visualization. And so sometimes we get the question, can we go from tidy surat to surat and vice versa? And this question is not relevant at all in this case, because we never leave surat or single cell experiment. So there is not such a thing as a tidy surat object. The surat object will never know tidy surat exists. Tidy surat stays on top, and interfaces surat object with you in this case and with the tidyverse. Okay, so this was the um, initial introduction, um, and I will ask if you have any question, um, please put them in the chat. I imagine if uh, you have never seen these um, adapters as they. They use a quite different paradigm for what we are used to. Um, I imagine, you know, not all messages uh, got to you very clearly. So if that's the case, uh, please let me know so we can have a brief discussion about a few aspects that are, might not be clear. Yes, appreciating also well explained so far. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say that um, <clears throat> that uh, giving a presentation that early is not that easy, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm doing my best. All right. Um, 
Okay, so can uh, the people that uh, want to follow along confirm that the installation was successful? Okay. All right. So uh, I think I will show you briefly uh, the website is the render of the actual uh, vignette. So you can, um, I mean, I guess you, you, you will look mainly my our, uh, studio session, uh, but uh, you have just to mention you have uh, four parts and you will be able to navigate them. Uh, the first part is the introdu introduction to Tidy Surat um, in the sense of the coding. Um, uh, the part two is, uh, is, is an example of how we can visualize and manipulate a signature in single cell data. Uh, the part three is nested analysis. Let's see how we go uh, as the complexity is rising as we go. And the number four is the uh, pseudo-bulk analysis, which um, I, I will explain what they are if you have never heard of them. So um, even though, well, let me first, of, well, let me switch to my R session. Okay. Um, is it big enough or, or um, I mean, I guess, yes, it uh, can, be, can be too big. But is it big enough for you to be comfortable uh, looking at the screen? I'm referring to the fonts here. Uh, looks good. Okay. Um, good. All right. So even though some of you have not had the experience with single cell, I assume the concept the concept of single cell is pretty much known here. Let me know if it's not. Um, the, the really basic thing to understand that we are probing cells and yes, we are um, probing cells. In this case, we are probing mRNA molecules. So for each cell, we have a um, list of mRNA molecules with their respective counts. Um, so that's pretty easy to grasp. Um, and these, initial part will show you how you can read a single cell uh, container in the, this workshop is using surat container but virtually if you replace surat and convert it to single cell and you execute the tidy code uh, this will work uh, the same um, so and I will show you again how to switch between seamlessly between uh, tidyverse and the Surat um, actually analysis commands, piping them together uh, to obtain a very elegant um, pipeline here. I also assume, well, let me, Surat, as I explained, is a single cell analysis framework, is developed by Satya Lab is very popular um, and includes, um, is quite well organized and uh, user-friendly um, and includes a lot of functions that can also be piped together in the, you know, in a way tidyr style. So first of all, let's uh, load some of the library we will use. Uh, for example, we are using, we are loading some uh, tidyverse libraries, including uh, as well as Surat and some libraries for coloring. Okay, so I will execute chunk by chunk. Of course, uh, the here there are there is in there is explanatory text uh, that uh, is more detailed to what I will you know um, uh, tell you. Um, but uh, of course, is there because if you want to go back you will be able hopefully to understand whatever and to remember whatever we I show you today uh, in a later time. So I will just focus on the code chunks and, and comment on them. 
So let's load a Surat object that is included in this um, in this package, in this um, in this work workshops package. So, well, uh, let me restart my session because here on my I must have loaded tidy Surat already. So uh, this is showing already in the tidy version. Let's see. Okay. Well, let me hack the system. I'm not sure why the the tidy surat behavior. Okay, so normally, uh, if you let's say you load surat as we did before and you load a surat object as i showed you in the introduction if you print the surat object on screen uh you will see a summary of the surat object okay not much you not much information will will be exposed to you uh and again you can see the which assays are in there which reduce dimensions and so on but not not much than that now when we um, load tidy surat, what is the difference? As again, I showed you before, that you will see the same object uh, differently. In this case, uh, this will be visualized to you as a data frame. What this data frame includes? It includes the cell-related uh, information, which is metadata and reduced dimensions and so on. Um, so, for example, here we have, in this case, this is a very small data set. We have just six features, so six genes with 33,000 cells, uh, one assay, which is SCT, which is a um, typical scaling and normalization from Surat, but uh, is not, uh, I mean, an active assay, which is normalized, and a total of two assays, which is RNA and SCT which is also true for the um, uh, printout above. So nothing has changed here. But we can see that now we can, we have a lot of information exposed to us. So we have all these metadata, sample, barcode, cell cycle scores, um, cell types that we have, we had inferred before, so on and so forth. Then we, see, we have a description of how this object is, was created. Uh, I think is later on. But nonetheless, this object was analyzed, so there are there is information already in here. Now, if you if you want to use Tidyverse, but you really really like the original uh, display of the data, you can toggle these options: so restore Surat show, and you can go back to the original. But because of Tidy Surat, Surat library is in, is loaded, now you can use Tidyverse nonetheless. Uh, but uh, we like better the tidy representation, so we toggle this back and, and we can see the tidy representation. As I was mentioning, this object is untouched. So everything that was working before on your Surat object works now. Let's say we want to use a assay function from Surat, which simply lists the number of us the, the list the assays that this object contains and we obtain what we expect. And this is true for any, any uh, analysis um, function we apply. Now, I will, um, again, let me know if you have any doubts. I prefer any question rather than you, you, you keep guessing maybe what I'm talking about, uh, as uh, most of you did not are not very, very familiar with single cell analysis. So don't be shy. Um, so in the next, cap, in the next uh, couple of minutes, I will show you some simple tidyverse uh, functions applied to this Surat object to give you an idea of what we can do. And uh, if you have used tidyverse before, they work pretty much as they would work on a data frame. So uh, 
we have this surat object. Let's say we want to filter some cells uh, of this surat object. Let's say we want to filter in the cycle cells in the cycle phase G1. So we can pipe our input object to the filter function. And uh, rather than having 30,000 cells, now we have 18,000. The object has been updated. See, underlying object has been updated. In this case, is filtered and returned to us. Of course, I could have saved this surat object in a variable, but Tidyverse is very good with piping, so we can explore the object without uh, saving temporary variables if we don't need to. Uh, let's say I want to select some of the metadata column, uh, for example, for decreasing I don't problem installing the packages, but I mean, the, the, there, is, there is a question in the chat, but could not install your workshop material because of GitHub app it limits, really? No, but the, uh, okay. All right, let's sort out this question. So I, I'm not sure, um, I, I wasn't aware I mean, it you... could also be an artifact of multiple people from my institution, potentially. So the R markdown, so I downloaded, I just downloaded the, I just cloned your GitHub repo, you know, so I have your, your GitHub repo on yeah. my machine, but yeah. when I try to install it in R, um, I get um, uh, an error message that I just popped there into chat. This could be an artifact too of, uh, you know, possibly being on my VPN. So I'm gonna try and get off the VPN. Um, um, can you API, API rate limit what? I've never seen that, but can you, um, let, let me pass to the com. I mean, uh, the, so you are cloning and installing it locally or not? Correct, yeah. And so what about if you try install it in this way? like with the is remotes install GitHub. Oh, th that's what's tried. That's so that is exactly what I tried. I did the remotes double colon install GitHub and I the see, error I message I got is from that. No, I can yeah. clone it using like the GitHub, you know, desktop or whatever, yeah. no problem. Um, if, so I have you... the materials, but line 77 where it's asking for the, um, where it's actually referring to our medicine 2023 uh, the, toddy trans it, that's yes, the part yes. that i can't do yeah can you um can you install it with the so if you are because you have to create a, a project uh i mean one way would be to create a project for the directory mm -hmm. uh, and then build it with the with the r studio so you, you you will have a build tab and you can do install uh, and that package will be stored for you. Um, I, I believe if you do actually, you don't need even the project. If you do dev tools install, uh, it should, if you are inside the, um, I know probably you need the package, you need the project, but nonetheless. Don't, don't you... worry. I'll, I'll try and I'll, I'll try and follow along and just, and figure it out and see if it's a, an artifact, like I'll, I'll figure something out. I just wanted to like raise that flag just so you, you knew what, what was going on. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, I mean, yes. Um, yeah. Feel free to follow along. Uh, but as I said, uh, with um, these two steps, you should be able to uh, creating a project in the directory and click install, um, then it should work. I was not aware of any limits. Um, yeah. I think these, um, this new setup of GitHub uh, for uh, these, um, how they are called, uh, not personal accounts, uh, they are getting stricter and stricter, but um, thanks for the uh, heads up. The markdown file link. Um, yeah, okay, I mean, good to know, good to know. Um, the package could can be installed locally for sure if you clone it or download it. Yeah. All right. Um, 
so you 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 we have the time uh, during the exercises i mean having said that sorry let me um, tell you even if you don't install the package uh, you can load the surat object if you go into the data directory so in this case let's say i clone or download the repository uh, you have the surat object here so you can load the surat object without executing line 77 so you you will be able to do exercises and so on i'm sorry i was looking away when you were explaining that can you just say that one more time so let's say you clone the repository yeah uh-huh you yep. go inside the repository and you have this data directory yep yeah uh this is where the data is uh, you can actually load it manually you don't ah, need to perfect do so you you can load surat object and um that then the surat object you don't need oh, to perfect. execute lines 77 so it will be there in the session for you excellent thank you yeah okay so let me um okay so um if for example as i was saying if we want to select some columns for just visualization or for making the object lighter or any other reason we can uh, just use again the select verb from tidyverse and you can see here that we are selecting the end count and phase columns uh, and that's what we get uh, we also get the reduced dimension as these are view only columns so we cannot touch them for um, obvious reason these are were calculated uh, so are always there but nonetheless the metadata has been filtered just for these two columns and a a functional surat object is returned to us um just to show you how uh, that whatever we apply on the object on the abstraction is then applied on the object itself let's say we sell we select these two columns and we save our updated surat and let's explore the metadata so we are not we're not go, now going inside the object uh, and see how the metadata look like and the meta all the columns of the metadata has been stripped away uh, and just two columns that we request are present okay so just to say that the object is always updated in the background Okay, so uh, another thing we can do is to manipulate the metadata columns. For example, we often, in real world analysis, we often need to change uh, things around for all sorts of reasons, combine columns and so on. For example, if we want to modify the um, phase of the cell cycle to a lower case, uh, it's very easy. Uh, we can use the mutate with applying the function to lower to phase and, the, and then uh, to visualization purposes for now, I select these two columns. As you can see here that the uh, capital letter phase has been transformed to a lower case, okay? <clears throat> um, let's give a bit of a more realistic um, data manipulation. Sometime we in our object we have um, we record the the path of the file where we got the object from, and sometimes this path includes information. Let's say the file name includes the sample ID or the sample treatment. If you download data from Geo, uh, this is often the case. So let's say in this case I built this object from these files. So that's where I read the files from. And as you can see here, we have some important information such as sample ID. So in this case, it's quite easy to extract the sample ID from the path and make it a, uh, isolate into a, its own column. So uh, in this case, we can use the quite powerful tidyverse verb extract is from tidyr we can extract from the file column create a sample column with the arbitrary regular expression in this case we are just selecting this alphanumeric 
string here. And uh, as you can see, I'm just selecting the sample column. We have what we expect. So we can do uh, something in the chat, the load in manually. Yes, that's exactly the same. Build menu install didn't work. Build ah okay that's, the menu start... yes yeah. just 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 for your knowledge that's all I'm yeah, all yeah. caught up no, it, yeah it's fine if, uh it's perfectly fine uh I mean uh I'm not sure why but now it doesn't matter um again uh, if you load the object from the data directory it will be fine for sure so it's good that you caught up so. Maybe you will be able to uh, try a couple of the exercises we have afterwards. Uh, but maybe for sure later on, I will ask you um, a bit more so I, I will be able to understand what, what was going on. Um, okay, so uh, you can imagine how powerful uh, this manipulation is as the tidy uh, verbs um, are again, uh, allow us to do very complex operation in an elegant way. Uh, another thing we might want to do is to unite two different columns. Let's say we want to create a unique ID. We have a patient ID and we have treatment ID. We want to create a unique sample ID. Uh, in this case, we have sample NBCB, which is a patient uh, code. Uh, our studio with root permission, okay. Um, so again, we have this um, quite powerful operator that is called unite, uh, where we state our new column, the column we want to unite, and uh, then I select these three columns um, just to, di for, to display for you. And you can see here that we have very simply created um, this new uh, sample identifier. For this quite complex operation, I'm not creating any temporary variable. And this is very uh, convenient and also avoids um, to make our code bug prone, where we have a lot of variable that we have to update, re-update, and so on. So in this case, I so far, I created zero variables uh, for all this operation that I could have piped together. Um, also, let me know if you, um, as I'm going along, if you need more time to catch up, just let me know. Just let me slow down a little bit. Uh, and uh, I prefer you to be on top of the of the thing rather than uh, try to, you know, run, run after. Okay, so this, um, this was the initial introduction to the verbs we can use. Um, so part one is done. Um, now, please pass into the chat, have a look. I will give you one minute to scroll up, have a look to the code. Again, you can go on the website and, and um, visualize the code again yourself. And uh, let me know if you have any question. Actually, um, ask question, nonetheless, I'm sure you have. So ask your questions in the chat and we can discuss about this. Good. Okay. Um, question is: Does does Surat object uh, does it Surat object which you are using have multiple assay? You mentioned it already. Yes. In this case, it has multiple assay. So if you, for example, 
um, in the in the header here, uh, you can see that we have two assays, which is RNA in Surat. This means usually row counts, so it's integers, uh, and SCT, which is the normalized. And in Surat, you have an active assay which you are applying operation on. In this case, also is displayed here. We have active assay SCT. So yes, this object includes two assays. And I will show you that even though the main this visualization, the main display does not include gene information, uh, because in single cell, the really main element is cells, but we can use join feature to add the uh, transcript abundance for all assays in our uh, data frame. Um, and it will be in the next example. All right, uh, part number two. Um, now things start to get a bit more complicated if you're not familiar with single cell analysis, but um, again, uh, in this sort of object, um, again, ask question. I prefer we stopped and we just, um, you know, explain parts multiple times rather than you maybe don't understanding really what's going on. And I'm speaking for half an hour. Uh, again, there are some details on the object, um, the, the object we are next using was created in this way. We, we, you, you can have a read, but is already a, uh, um, a object with some information associated with it. We have preprocesses and so on. And the next example is quite a realistic, uh, I mean, is actually a real example of a study that I perform um, where we did this analysis on breast cancer uh, PBMC, so circulating immune cells. And uh, after we have done our analysis and processing, we have been asked to analyze the um, an unconventional T cell type, which is called gamma delta T cells, uh, which is of course well known, but not so much in the context of our context of our research. So in breast cancer metastasis and so on. So we had to go back to the object where we already did all our clustering and so on, and to identify, better identify gamma delta, isolate them and reanalyze them. Okay, so that's the broad context I'm talking about here. So I will show you, um, yes, I will show you this object. I ah, know it's the same, yeah. Um, so the Surat object I showed you before is actually the one using in part two. Uh, so, well, for completeness, that's what I showed you before. That's why we have uh, the curated cell types and so on. Now, the first thing we did is to go into the literature and uh, try to see if there was a transcriptomic signature of gamma delta T cells that we could use to identify, identify these cells. So uh, we identify, we found a publication from Pizzolato where they did exactly that. And they proposed a very small transcriptomic signature and also how to calculate it. So an ar arithmetic formula, how to derive a unique score from these six genes. There are T cell genes, uh, TRDC, which are markers of gamma delta, um, and also negative markers that we will use. As I mentioned, we can use join features to add feature to our data set. Uh, so we, we take them from the underlying assays, so the matrices, and we put them in our data set. Once we add them, we can do whatever we wish with them. We can do calculations, we can do filtering, we can do visualization. So in this case, metadata information and gene abundance information are just variables. There is no much difference between them. And this is very powerful because we can combine them in these uh, tidyR queries, for example. So let's call join features and I will show you um, 
what the new columns are. So if we look at this object, we have six new columns called CD3, TRDC, and so on. Okay. And these will include, uh, in this case, we took them from the assay SCT. Now, if I, let's say, if I want to select some gene, just to show you, I could do pipe this into select, let's say I want to select cell and CD3G. Um, sorry, CD3D. Um, and you can see here that that's the SCT value of the CD3D. And I could filter uh, cells with uh, S, um, sorry, CD3D uh, bigger than a threshold. So I could filter for these uh, bigger than 1.5 and we, we would get our data set, so on and so forth. Okay, so now these could be used for anything as I will show you also later now. Okay, so we have our genes. Now we want to calculate our signature score. Pizzolato give a indication of how this score would be calculated. So we have some positive marker and negative markers. In this case, we can pipe now this object with the genes into a mutate function. We can simply create a new column, signature score, with the arithmetics. In this case, we are summing up the transcription of these positive markers and scaling them to zero, 0,1 and subtracting to this positive sub-signature a negative sub-signature, so a genes that should be absent, which are the CD8 markers that we are also rescaling. Um, so again, I'm doing some relatively complex operation here. I'm doing arithmetics on genes without creating a single temporary variable. Our environment is clean. If we, uh, you know, we can try many different things on the spot and we can just save whatever we are happy with. And uh, these um, all, all operations are self-contained. So that's very important. Um, now I select the signature score first uh, and everything else. And you can see here that we just simply added a, a column with a double uh, class here. And we have our signature score. As before, now we can do whatever we want with our signature score in combination with the other columns, as I will show you. Um, is everything clear so far? I'll, I'll come off mute and ask my question. Just, this is again, probably my naivete of not being a biologist, but when you're rescaling, you're rescaling relative to your data, right? Um, not to any reference. No, no, no. Rescaling is simply, after you do this sum, uh, you just scaling across all cells um, between zero and one. Right, but it's just within, you're not like getting a risk score out of this. This is just within your sample. You're distributing it between zero and one. For sure, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, it's very simple. I mean, literally is is like if this was a data frame. So let's forget, we can forget about assays and so on. We can just treat this as a data frame. So if I have a data frame with CD3, TRDC and so on, I create a new column, summing this column. And then in this case, uh, you know, this, I am creating this, which is an unnamed column. This, I'm doing this on the fly, which this first unnamed column, and then I'm rescaling it. I am I also creating this new column with no name and I'm rescaling it. So all the rows will be rescaled between zero and one. So yeah, is, there is nothing uh, beyond that. It's very simple especially simple because we are treating this as a data frame. Otherwise we should fish the assays, do the calculation as I will show you afterwards and, and, and creating few variables uh, among those. Um, 
Okay. Now, what we have done is simply create calculating the signature. Now, <clears throat> um, I will show you guys how we can combine Surat analysis tools with Tidyverse now very easily. So we have our signature and now we want to visualize the data. And there is a function called feature plot, uh, which simply visualizes our signature score across cells. In this case, using the UMAP reduced dimensions. Uh, again, this is a function from Surat, while these are functions from Tidyverse um, that we introduced with Tidy Surat. As you can see, we have uh, each dot here is a cell uh, who works with single cell. Uh, he's very familiar with this. Uh, is, is, is a bit like principal components, so our reduced dimensions. Each dot is a cell and we color by this signature that is from zero to one. And you can see that the, here we have a purple cloud that it might be our gamma delta T cells. So we, am, we might have found these cells to analyze after all. Um, we can, there are many uh, ad, ad hoc visualizations as I show you. But also this uh, tidy surat that we introduce makes very easy to, to do arbitrary plot using ggplot with not much effort. So sometime uh, we want to do custom visualization for papers. We want to use all sorts of styles. Uh, ggplot offers a huge ecosystem of uh, packages that interact with it. Uh, so if we want to have this freedom, how hard is to, uh, use ggplot instead. Uh, thanks to tidy surat, that's not hard at all because we can pipe our surat object into ggplot as if it was a data set again. So uh, simply we are arranging for popping up the cells with the, the biggest score. But here we are just simply using ggplot. So doing things explicitly here. We are plotting UMAP1 and UMAP2 dimension, coloring by the signature, and we are adding our aesthetics and so on. And you can see that we have similar visualization. And again, uh, this cluster might well be uh, the cells we are looking at, we are looking for. Yeah. Uh, so again, the fact that we can pipe our uh, single cell data container into ggplot is quite convenient. Again, look how many things are I'm doing, not creating a single variable. Let's say if we don't like what we see, we can change things around, change, you know, signature calculation, for example, and try things on the fly. I'd, I'd love to ask a question, and this is, outside of uh, your topic. So feel free to say you don't want to answer this question. Um, I teach R to researchers, um, some of which have never written code. They're, these are not molecular biologists. Um, and I deal a lot with some people who really enjoy uh, and find value in creating interim objects that they then have in their environment that they can manipulate and work with. Um, and uh, I have concerns about reproducibility. Um, and you've, you've emphasized several times, look, I'm not creating a, a lot of extra objects in my environment. This is all on the fly. This is all piped in. Why do you prefer that? Um, well, uh, I mean, let me understand your argument. So you are saying that you, when you teach, you 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 teach to create temporary var. Uh, you to, to I, say I don't. I agree with you, but I okay. I want to understand because a lot of people who are new to coding like to say, "Oh, I made this thing. Now I can go and look at it, and my I thing see, is see, there." See, okay. Yeah. And so, and I, I have a hard time explaining, I, I feel like to, to researchers, why this is a bad idea or not, yeah. not a bad idea, but why it could come back to, to bite them much. later. 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, um, the the uh, our habits of of um, so, uh, so one thing to stress is that R is quite powerful because it's a functional language that so far we've never used as functional language. We use for loops, while loops, as we would do with uh, Python, with C++ and so on. Yeah. So um, in a way, the fact that we kept saving variables is a habit that comes from other languages, like, um, like the ones I mentioned. And um, basically, the majority of variables we save is not because we want to look at them, but because we need to execute the code. We need to update them in the order of, um, for the code to function. So the, the, the thing I stress now is that you can save variables if you want to look at them, but if you don't want to look at them in a second stage, you don't need to. So that's Got the it. thing I would say. Yeah. It's not our code doesn't hinge of variables as much. However, whenever we want to save, you know, as uh, as I'm doing here now, for example, I'm saving this object that just includes gamma delta because I want to save it for reproducibility. That's what I'm doing. But let's say I work two hours on this, and I finally, as actually is the is the what happens uh, with me. So uh, I wanted to understand whether understand whether I should rescale the variable or not, in which way I should rescale the variable. And to understand whether I do this well, I have to visualize. So instead of saving hundreds of variables and so on, I can quickly iterate until I'm happy and save the objects that I want to compare or I want to you know, send to colleagues and so on. Um, yeah, so that's what I would stress. The fact that we don't need any more variables unless we want to. And of course, for reproducibility, yes, you save variables. I do it all the time. But uh, yeah, are not functional anymore to our programming necessarily. No, thank you. That's helpful. And and I, I feel like saving objects off can actually be less reproducible because a lot of times people say, well, I don't know how I made this, yeah. but it's, uh, but I'm using it. And I said, well, if you don't know how you made it, you, you can't use that. <laughs> yeah. Especially, I mean, one comment and then I'll, I'll, there is another, but on this very, um, very bad, um, how can I say, um, behavior that we are used to is that we update the same object multiple times. So, you know, we say surat object equals surat object, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this is especially bad for reproducibility because we update in our object in, in a three hour working session. And then we might, you know, go back and we don't know which, co which commands we re-execute. And this, uh, led to the object being something else that you think uh, this is something that happened to me all the time and I, I'm sure happened to many people. You save an object you were thinking was analyzed in a way, but actually you didn't execute that command, you send that object and so on. So uh, definitely less variable could increase reproducibility. Uh, but um, Yes, Hector says that as a new user, it's comfortable to save variables. And I agree, uh, it's good to have objects that you have there. This is really, once you get familiar, so you know, if you have some years of experience, you want to be very efficient, uh, then you don't need variables anymore, uh, unless you want them. So it's not anymore a comfort to have variables. Uh, my environment can be empty. Um, but uh, my work is more efficient. So I, I agree, this is probably when you are very familiar, then you want to speed through your analysis, this free you of a lot of um, problems. Okay. Uh, yes, I mean, as having a lighter environment is good for many, many reasons. Um, 
So that's the, but again, you can save variables if you want. You can save variables at every step. Um, but the important thing that you don't need to do it anymore. In the base R language, you do need to save variables to modify the metadata, remerge the metadata, and do all these sort of things. Okay, so um, let's step. There is a, another functionality. It's not, uh, a, you know, extremely important here, but it's a very nice thing to visualize. So for example, let's say we want, we know that these cells might be the cells we want and we want to circle them. Yeah, in a way it could be to recluster cells and do more complex operation. But if we want just to visualize them in a quick way, we might want to draw a gate around them and filter them. So we did a package called tidy gates. This works for any data set, it's not single cell. Uh, if you have a table of uh, housing, uh, is a distribution of housing, you could do the same. Um, and you call, you, you, uh, we have our scoring here and you, you create a column gate uh, using these two UMAP dimension and uh, this gate column will be created and then we can filter on this column and uh, this is an interactive uh, command so I need to paste in the let's see if it works um, figure margins yeah, I'm a bit let me um, let me zoom out a little so now we have this plot we can now draw gates on the, the cells we think are gamma delta. We click on finish. Our cells are selected. Um, our columns are, uh, the gate column is created and then we are filtering and I will show you the result. Again, all these, if you like variables, you can save at whatever stage, but again, I could do all this just saving the final object. So uh, we have a gate column here, which is an integer. And um, this column hey, is one if it's in the gate and zero in the others, we can draw multiple gates. And we are filtering just gamma delta T cell. And as you can see now, we have a total of a thousand cells rather than 30,000, okay? Um, again, this is, a, is a basically a whole pipeline I'm doing here where it's very readable. So each, each block, I mean, I'm not commenting here in a real world I would comment. I'm not doing here to not clock too much, but each block has its own function. I'm drawing feature, calculating signature, drawing gates, filtering. Uh, and of course, you know that Tidyverse offers this um, very verbose grammar that is almost nat natural language. Okay, um, now for the sake of the this workshop, I will show you how another way to filter the data, which is very unoptimal, which could be to filter based on a threshold. Let's say our signature is higher in this cluster. Uh, and I say, okay, for the quick analysis, I filter uh, cells based on the signature. And I save uh, my object this way. I do this because uh, the gating is not is interactive, so it cannot be executed automatically while this can. Um, nonetheless, let's say I I'm happy with the signature score be bigger than zero point five, and and here is my object. In this case, I have uh, less cells here. So I, I'm saving this as Surat object gamma delta as this object now contains only gamma delta. And one thing we want we might want to do is after we filter these type of cells, we rerun the analysis pipeline, which normally includes uh, scaling, variable gene detection, clustering, re dimensionality reduction, and so on. And again, in the real world analysis, you, this is an iterative process. So you reanalyze and reanalyze these cells until you are happy, you are visualizing what you need. 
and is very important again probably if you are more familiar with the analysis to be able to do this on the fly so again i pipe my um, analysis together i filter my um, cells and then surat is quite is quite good with piping so i can basically pipe the whole analysis pipeline on this subcluster which includes norm uh, normalization uh, find of um, identification of variable feature uh, integration so removal of technical artifacts and clustering and uh, this takes some time uh, but uh, I mean you you can get the gist let's say if I need this no uh, I mean let me let me um, execute this let's see what happens and then um, you can ask some question if you if you have some Yeah, it took a short time because it's a very small data set, but again, very easy to reanalyze a subset of data uh, to then understand what these cells are. If you are not happy, change things in the pipeline and re-execute it multiple times. Uh, and the ob output object, again, is a Surat with the updated UMAP, updated integrated dimensions, so on and so forth. Uh, now, what would be the code if we use Bayesar, if we forget about tidyverse? Uh, so what before tidy surat people had to do? Well, as you can see here, you can, um, you have to save object in variable for them to integrate them and put them back. So in this case, we are calculating the positive part of the signature and rescaling. We are calculating the negative part of the signatures and rescaling. And uh, we are doing the arithmetics here to subtract them in the and add this as a Surat uh, data column. And we are filtering here. Okay, so there are you know four different steps to do this. Let's say if we want to, let's say we are taking from the points we made, okay, say I saved these two variables and now I can visualize them, yeah? Uh, while here I was doing everything, you know, this would be the final code probably for, uh, you know, more clarity and, and elegance and reproducibility. But nonetheless, if I want to visualize these two column, um, I can be more explicit in my coding. So rather than calculating a signature here, I can do the positive signature and negative signature. Let's say uh, negative signature. Yeah, and um, I can then select those and visualize them. Again, do I have to create variables to visualize things? No, in this case. Yeah, this is my positive signatures and negative signatures. And then I can explicitly um, create the signature simply subtracting one to the other. Yeah, so um, again, we can find comfort in saving variables, but this is, um, this is I don't think is needed. So we can let go of, of this pretty easily. Again, we just in this case, I would just save objects that are big to reproduce, and I want to actually I want I mean save variables that I want to save to files, for example, and or or other operations. Um, another beautiful thing, if you do single cell analysis, you find this interesting. 
uh, is that normally, as I show you, we see visualize the cells in two dimensions. So this each cell, like RNA sequencing, each sample is characterized by thousand genes, so thousand dimension. To vi for visualize them, we can reduce this dimensionality to two. And in this case, UMAP is a good dimensionality reduction because it's not linear uh, and uh, is great for single cell. But, but sometimes adding a third dimension could give us a better idea of the heterogeneity of this, um, of this data, as I will show you today. Creating 3D plots with tidy surat is very easy as we can plot our Surat object directly into Plotly, which is an interactive plotting package, very powerful. Because reduced dimensions and metadata are just variables in our abstraction, we can use them together. So we can just state the column names for our dimension and the cell type column for our, for our colors. And uh, simple code, we can get a three-dimensional plot. We can start to explore uh, the data set under a new perspective. And in this case, we can see that some cluster are uh, a bit better resolved and we can see some relations, some relations that before were compressed in 2D. Uh, so for large, the question is for large data set, does tidy surat make any difference with memory allocation and computation? Uh, the answer is no, because the object is untouched. So the environment never knows tidy surat existed. If you save the surat object, that surat object never knows tidy surat applied operation on it. Um, that's the answer. Of course, tidy, when you do mutate or select, tidy surat actually does computation because I reproduce those functions. Uh, but uh, for any analysis or any object uh, memory in print, absolutely not. The object is untouched in any way. Uh, and with this, um, with this visualization, you, we can switch off cells. I mean, just be interactive with the object. And, and this, um, I mean, of course, this can be applied not just to uh, Surat objects, uh, can be applied to, um, you know, uh, data frames in general, but uh, this is obviously very powerful in single cell analysis. Okay, I think the, this is, was the second part. Uh, we have, maybe one hour to go. Um, we have seen quite a lot, okay? Um, I assume, especially if you're not used with single cell, we have seen signature calculation, visualization, analysis, and so on. So we stop for five, 10 minutes. Um, I would um, very much appreciate if who wants tries the exercise I will give are very easy. But just typing a few lines of code can make you remember all this much, much better and is a fun challenge too. Now, I assume the people who wants to code have loaded their object. Uh, if you load the object from the data directory, even though you don't install the package, um, you are able to execute the whole code. So we have the Surat object here. We have the Surat object with the 3D dimensions, I mean, uh, you don't need now for the exercise. Um, so basically the only thing you need is the Surat object, yeah? Um, and there are two exercises for you. One is we have taken our Surat object and saved the gamma delta um, T cells or identified them with the threshold. The question is, what is the proportion of gamma delta T cells with the threshold we just visualized among all cells? Yeah. So you have some code to define gamma delta. The question is, use the code, pipe it 
to some tidyverse operation to identify what is the proportion of gamma delta across among all cells, let's say 10% or 5%. Um, so um, try this exercise and uh, let me know in the uh, in the chat what's what's your code or what's your answer or uh, well do that first and then we will step to the second question okay surat wrappers okay why we need uh for the no well okay good point uh yes yeah, surat wrappers uh, they get installed when you install the package uh you can i can uh, i mean first of all you don't need surat wrappers is only needed for these reanalysis only needed for these run fast mnn but you don't need this for the um, for the question so this was actually evaluated false so just to tell you that you can reanalyze the object nonetheless i will update the uh, the guides to be able to you can install surat up uh, wrappers um, you know by yourself uh, is on is a github repository but definitely you don't need it now uh, to execute um, to to run the workshop no i mean you can run every chunk but some chunks are evaluated false for a reason um these might take a lot of time in workshops with big objects and so on but uh, 90 percent of the chunks can be executed no problem i believe even without installing uh, but uh, while you do you see a bit the code and you do the exercise if you want i will add these to the readme actually This is how you can install Surat wrappers and you will be able to execute all chunks. Good. Um, good. All right. If you got the proportion, type it in the chat. And also, you can uh, type the code that you used. Uh, or maybe, I mean, let's let, actually let's wait a few minutes if someone else wants to try. Can we, I, I'm able to select the points with tidy gates. Uh, see, yes, yeah, so you, you have to 
of course, to create a polygon, you have to, to type three times on the, you have to execute tidy gate in the console, yeah? Because it's interactive. You cannot execute it in the R markdown as I did before. When you execute it in the console, uh, you will get a plot on the right and you need to click three times to draw the polygon and click finish uh, or click escape and the polygon will be created for you and TidyGate will work. Having said that, for the exercise, you, not, you don't need TidyGate. You, you, you can just filter based on this simple threshold of signature score bigger than 0 0.5. Yeah, uh, but if you want to use the tidy gate for yourself, uh, for the future, or for fun, you need to. This is the chunk you need to pass copy and paste in the. Um, I lost the tidy gate here. Okay, you need to pass into the um, console like I'm doing now. Yeah, if you passed it then uh, a plot will be visualized for you. You click one, two, at least three, but you can click more and you click on finish or click or type escape. And you can see that it will work. Good, Joy, do you want to write your answer? Good. So temper uh, one percent. Yes. Good. However, I challenge you to use the um, tidyverse verbs to do that. Yeah. So um, imagine you have your uh, you have your surat object. Uh, you know what the threshold is. So one way that I would like you to reproduce is rather than filter on the threshold, you create a column based on the threshold. And there are uh, tidy in, in tidyverse, there are many verbs you can use. There is a count verb. Um, yeah, basically, I, that's almost the solution, but I, uh, you know, uh, would be good if you want to um, implement it. So again, instead of filtering on the threshold I showed before, you can create a new column, count on that, and uh, get the proportion that way. You, you can't three, four, nine, three, four, nine. Yes, so instead of filtering, so eliminating self from your object, you can mutate, so you can create a new column. Yeah, exactly. Make that a summarized count. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you can count directly on this. You could, well, could or you have to create a column and then count on that column. That column could be, is gamma delta true or false? The context here is that um, sometimes you want to calculate proportion to decide something about your pipeline. And you are doing hundreds of these checks while you are interactively coding. Uh, so instead of saving a Surat object, a Surat gamma delta, and calculate proportion and do this 10 times because you are changing your thresholds. Uh, you want just to change without saving variables who are part of the pipeline, execute, execute, execute. So these, these things might seem overkill, the fact that you pipe all together until you spend hours and hours chunking through 
data analysis, exploration, visualization, reanalysis, and so on. So uh, accumulating the fact that you don't need to save variables for 30 times and copy and paste uh, your code, your variables, and so on, and do multiple clicks to execute multiple variables, uh, this speeds up your workflow. So that's, the, that's why I'm suggesting this. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's exactly what you should do. Uh, I give uh, the, I can give the, the, the solution here, but uh, yeah, you got it right. So instead of filter, I could, I could mutate. So create a new column I'm showing here in the console. Uh, let's say is gamma delta. Okay. And in this case is gamma delta is signature is this signature, my Zoom environment is covering everything. And you can see the, here that we have created a new column and then we can just count is gamma delta. Okay. Um, and I mean, you could calculate that. Uh, the, now what I'm doing is over killing this case, but you can, you know, um, you, you could, you know, you could summarize these two, or maybe you could add count the total number of cells. See if this works. Add count is deprecated. Here you go. Add drop argument. Okay, I'm not using it. And you could do mutate, um, mutate proportion equal one versus, versus the other is and plus dot. And uh, here we go. Yeah. Um, Good, all right. And you can do the second exercise uh, just to challenge if you're in a second uh, stage later on. Okay, so um, I assume all the que possible questions have been asked. So let's let's step to a, a bit more powerful and complex operation. So can I ask to the chat, you can reply yes or no, um, who has ever used nest map uh, operations for nested analysis um, in tidyverse? Okay, nobody is not is not as as no, well known, although is definitely the most powerful program uh, functional programming uh, infrastructure that R has, and this is not just true for biology. Uh, this is true for whatever data sets you have in your hands. Um, indeed, I use it all the time irrespectively if I'm working on biological data or data frames. So um, group by, yes. Um, yes, it's somehow similar to group by, but is more, um, is more general and uh, powerful in a way. And I will show you. Um, for example, we group by, you can group by and do some operation. Um, let's say you want to summarize, you group by and summarize, yeah? If you do this, uh, you have 100 rows. You, after you summarize, we have 10 rows. 
So you, you lost some data. When you do nesting, it's similar to group by, but you start to create new, co new nested columns on which you can do operation, summary operation, and not lose any data, and then I'm nesting later on after you've done your calculations. I will show you here on this biological data. Uh, but again, this is a data frame abstraction. So whatever I'm showing you here, you can do on a data frame. Okay, so let's have let's do a summary operation. Let's have a look of how many cell types do I have in my data set and how many cells. Again, you can do this simply with count, which come from tidyverse. Um, I have CD4, which are T cells. I mean, you know, these are all immune cells, different type of um, immune cells here. We have NK cells, which um, are um, cytotoxic cells and so on. So you can have an idea of the distribution of cell types. Now, let's group this data. Let's suppose when you do single cell analysis is often useful or needed to do operation or analysis per cell type. Okay, so you want to analyze, uh, you want to perform differential expression within B, B cells across treatments, within T cells across treatments. So this grouping all often comes about uh, with, uh, with single cell analysis and not only. So here, what I've done is to take my Surat object and apply the nest command from Tidy her. Uh, I'm creating, I'm grouping my data to a new column is called Surat according with this curated cell type. As you can see here, the data I've produced is a data frame with two columns. I could have nested based on multiple columns. Um, in this case, it's just two columns as you've seen before based on the uh, cell type. And this new column includes itself Surat objects, yeah? So uh, let, just to show you, let's extract. And in this case, I'm saving this nested in a variable. Let's extract this first element and show you what it is. So we are just taking the first row and pulling the Surat. And uh, as I was mentioning, this is a just Surat object. But instead of having 30,000 cells, has just 4,000, which is just cells for this type of CD4 cell. Yeah. So, um, for example, what could you do with this? Um, i show you just a brief example. Let's say I want to count how many cells I have. I want to filter the cell types that are more abundant and I want to get back my original data set. Normally you would take your Surat object, count, so obtain a summarization, maybe save to a variable, doing a left join with your original object and filter that way. Again, we have to create a variable, joining, executing two different commands, maybe 30 times because we are iterating our across our um, workflow. How can we do it in one go? Yeah. Um, I mean, and the count is a simple operation, but instead of count, I could have an analysis that gives me a score. So in this case, I have my nested and I can mutate and create another column that is called M and uh, pool gives these uh, functional tools, uh, which is called map. And map work very nice with nest because map iterate is, is a bit like L apply. Iterates a function over a list. In this case, the list is the Surat uh, column I have here. So uh, a nice thing about map that it can, uh, it can output any class, many classes. For example, map int uh, outputs an integer. So I can simply give as input to my column, 
and uh, um, count how many cells in the columns uh, I have in my objects. And uh, let's see if it works. So in this case, I've counted the number of cells. Let's say I want just cell types that are very abundant because I need to do statistical tests, for example. I want a lot of information. So I can filter n bigger than, let's say, four thousands. And uh, I will just get those cells. And then I do a nest surat. And I will get back a surat object. Um, yeah. um, in this case, it's not working. Must the positive length be strange? Normally, is quite easy, easy operation. Okay, it doesn't work because I have some scale data. Um, well, this, that's a bit unfortunate. I do I do it often, these kind of operations. Maybe you can imagine how it would work. So it would give you back uh, the similar to group by an ungroup. Well, let's... Um, so the question is, how is this different from group by and ungroup? Let's say I want to do, I mean, uh, the tidy, um, this tidy surat, it doesn't, uh, it is not implements group by in a powerful way. However, on a table, you could do group by, but let's suppose, um, how can I explain this? So let's suppose you have, um, you know, I let's convert these surat objects to a table so you can we can do group by and so on. Uh, let's uh, let me uh, answer to this first question. So uh, I convert it to a table, yes. Yeah? So now it's simply a table. I don't have a gene expression anymore, uh, but um, Let's group by, let's say, this column. Now I want to, maybe I want to summarize and identify how many, um, how many cell, cells there are per cell type. So N equal, how can I do this? Uh, um, is like count operation um, is would be n row dot something like that no uh, and here we go yeah now and I filter let's say n bigger than four thousands um. Well, now I have, I cannot ungroup this object anymore because my object has been summarized. Uh, so I should save in a variable and add this information to my original object um, or, you know, um, do other operations. So instead of this simple summarization, let's say I have a complex operation. Let's say a linear, I want to run a linear model on these groups. So with group by, it's not always easy to do very complex operations, yeah? So nest gives you the ability, let's say instead of this N, I have LM, I want to take some columns of my data set and uh, extract a p-value, and then I want to filter based on the p-value. So group by is limited on this uh, aspect while the paradigm nest and map is completely uh, general. So in a way, instead of applying some operation here on the groups, 
I mean, I can apply whatever operation I want on the groups and produce whatever variable that I can then add to my data set and filter and do whatever operation, visualization and so on. Um, so I never lose data. I could, I can always unnest. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate it's not working here. I'm not sure why. And of course I don't have time to investigate, but normally it's seamless. So you nest based on something you unnest and your surat object will be reconstructed out of that. So very powerful is a general tool, is a generalization of group by and, and, and uh, mutate or summarize. Um, is it more map reduce? I, Joy, I'm not sure what you mean. Is, is it more than map reduce or? No, I guess I meant the, the point of nest and map is, is if it acts more like a map reduce function. Um, which it sounds like it does. You're you're sending things off to a complicated task and then having the results of that phone home. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, yeah, and some operations, some like you can re well, I won't go into details, but you can return complex map can return automatically complex objects such as data frames, and you can call map DFR. Uh, and that's actually reduced, so you you actually unpacking that. But anyway, it's uh, that's exactly it. Um, okay, what we were doing here. So now we are ne we nested by cell type, and as I said, often we want to do operations such as differential expression for each cell type, or whatever other operations, or visualizations for each cell types, or dimensionality reductions for each cell type. Again, this is even more powerful because all these iteration are done in a functional way. So we are not creating and updating variables. All these operations are done in isolation within this function, so they don't affect each other. And this is very helpful for building robust code. For example, we have our nested object as I showed you before. Um, doing something here is not printing it. Uh, so what we are doing now is to do an operation across the surat object. In this case, we are taking our X is uh, our surat column. That's a syntax of map. And we are piping through a normalization and uh, identification of variable features. Um, sorry. A normalization, this is a differential expression function from Surat. So we are comparing treatments here uh, because uh, I gave the this identity, default identity to the column treatment. So the Surat knows that our identity we want to compare are is treatments. So again, normalizing, doing our hypothesis testing, filtering by p-value, and taking the first 10 genes. Now, of course, this is the final code because I already um, explore what this output is. But after I know what this output is, the code is very elegant. So I can uh, put my final code there and I will work you, walk you through here. For example, uh, let's suppose, I let me pull the first surat. So I'm not using map, just taking the first element and um, just taking the first element and, and do operation on, the, on that. So I can pull Surat column, which is a list, uh, but I take just the first element. So that's a simple Surat object, as I showed you before. And let's do this operation of hypothesis testing. And I show you what's the result. So what's happening inside the map. The output of find all markers is a data frame. Um, with you know stati st statistics, so p-values, full change. These are the log. Uh, these are the average um, transcription of the genes across cells, and the gene. Yeah. Um, so what I'm doing here, I'm taking this output, filtering by p-value, and taking the first ten rows and taking the row names, which are the genes. 
So what I'm doing here is detect, the, selecting the top significant genes for this comparison within each cell type. And I'm repeating this across cell types. Let me update this object. And I will show you what I got. So, and I'm creating a new column. So I have my cell type, Surat. I'm creating a new column, which is called significant genes. And with Nest, the powerful thing that we are building basically a database, we are with many column types that we can then uh, do operation on, as I will show you. This will take probably a minute because it has to go through 30 or so cell types. If you have any question, as this is quite new to all of you and um, you, know, you want to understand more, uh, let me know. Okay, so it finished. How does our data set look like? I'm sure why now it takes some time to, to display this. Anyway, so again, we have our three columns, cell type, surat, and now we have created a new column. So this new column includes character uh, vectors with our 10 genes. So as you can see, the size is 10. Um, now, usually we can build, uh, we can build heat maps of these markers to visualize the transcript abundance across all cells, yeah? And as we are doing this analysis per cell type, we want to create a heat map per cell type. So here I'm creating a new column that is called heat map. Thanks a lot. Uh, that is called heat map and um, takes here we're using a function that is called map two that rather than taking one column, it takes two columns, which is surat and significant genes. And we are taking the first input, which is surat, scaling and building the uh, heat map. And as, uh, as the gene feature argument, we are giving the second column. So we are taking the surat, taking the genes and do an operation together for, to create a new column here, which is called heat map. And this new column will include plots. So as you can see, this is much more powerful than group by, because now that we have nested, we can create um, an arbitrary number of columns of different kinds. Um, again, uh, I'm in principle not creating variables here. It's very robust. I'm, I don't, don't need to... Um, fill my session with temporary variables just because I'm doing complex operation. Exactly, yeah. So this is, I mean, the question is, is X ref references the data, so the first input column, and the Y, the genes, the second input column, yes. Uh, X and Y, uh, I mean, if you swap these two arguments, so if you do Surat the second, then it will be the other way around. So it depends on the order of the algorithm of the arguments. So this is the input and this is the operation. So map to accept three arguments, the first input, the second input and the operation. Uh, and just X and Y is uh, whatever they, they call the, Uh, these inputs. So now you can see that I have a new column, which is called heat map. And now that I have a, a list of heat maps, I could, for example, pull the first one or using a patchwork to put them together or, you know, whatever I want. Um, but again, I'm the, the, the point I'm showing here that I can use now this nested data set almost like a database in which I have data, visualization, 
gene list. And it's a great package because we can ship this. We can save now this nested in a file in RDS. Um, and uh, all the relations, the relations between plots, uh, analysis, linear models, data is all there in just one package. We don't have to have many files that we have to merge together and so on. In, in, uh, moreover, we have uh, all these um, operations are self-contained in the function. As I said, this is the functional programming that R was designed for. Um, okay, I think uh, we have 30 minutes to go. Um, Ah, yeah, I mean, this is uh, not to be evaluated, but um, I'm showing here that I can go from object to heat map all in one go. Again, if I don't want to create variables, I don't need to. If I want, I can. Um, I think Joy was the one who was doing the exercises. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if anything else is doing it. However, you can um, uh, you can challenge yourself later on to make sure you understood this uh, on the on the website I gave uh, the, all the material is there and you can reproduce the exercise. Okay, so this is the last part of the workshop. Um, before I stop for maybe ten, you know five minutes to maybe give a little break to you guys and myself and give you the opportunity to go back, see the code, think about uh, what's happening here uh, with this tidyverse thing. I will just summarize what we have seen so far. So <clears throat> the first part, I show you how to apply simple tidyverse verbs to Surat object in a way Surat object behaves like a data frame. In part two, we visualized a case study, basically, uh, where we uh, identify a signature and analyze and use that signature to analyze the cells that were characterized by. It. Um, and the third part, I show you how you can use powerful tools such as nest and map to do nested analysis. Yeah. And in this last uh, part, um, I will show you how uh, you can do pseudo bulk analysis, which means sometimes is very convenient and informative, even though you have a lot of cells, let's say 100,000 cells, and in 10 tissues, so it's 10 uh, specimens. We might want to collapse all cells from each specimen to a unique measure. So instead of a thousand cells, just one sample, summing all the expression of these uh, cells uh, to do, uh, you know, to analyze the variation in a simpler way and to do um, somehow more robust, sometime more robust analysis using very well-known tools they have developed for bulk analysis. So you, you virtually collapse these cells as if it were a tissue, basically. That's why it's pseudo bulk. Um, okay, I will, um, if you have any question for any material so far, put it in the chat and, and uh, we will take five minutes for that. Uh, you mean the repository of the workshop or, or the repository of the tools? So, uh, well, I sent to everybody the workshop here. So again, the workshop is here. Um, 
you should be able to install the package. Hopefully the API limits uh, will be over. I, I've never seen these uh, limits on package installation, but. And if you go to the repository uh, in the readme, there is the link to the website web page so where this whole workshop is rendered for you and uh, since we are here i just if you click on the um, on the user of the repository of that repository it's called tidy transcriptomic workshop we have uh, many workshops there that we have given uh, that are somehow different one another so you you can learn from there and I will pass to you also my um, GitHub profile as it includes many of these packages we are talking today. So tidy surat, tidy single cell experiment, tidy gate, tidy heat map, a lot of tidy stuff among other things I do in my research. So that's the user. One minute and then we do the last part. This will be very similar with bulk analysis. So if you are more familiar with bulk, this will look very similar to you. Yeah, very, sorry, familiar to you. Okay, so as I, as I explained before, um, sometimes it's very hard to understand major technical or biological effects across many tens of thousands of cells. Sometimes it's much more informative to collapse those cells if, as if it were a bulk tissue and, understand, and do analysis of variability in the more standard way that we are used with bulk RNA sequencing. In other words, we sacrifice the variability across cells to better understanding the variability across samples, for example. Uh, so in this case, I load, um, load some libraries, um, some tidyverse libraries, as well as some tidy transcriptomic libraries. Tidy bulk is the analysis tools that tidy transcriptomic has <clears throat> just for bulk at the moment. And uh, I will show you as includes all uh, common operation that you can do and anal analysis that you can do with RNA bulk sequencing data in a very elegant and tidy R um, format. And as well as tidy summarized experiment, this is very similar with tidy single cell experiment as is an adap adapter of summarized experiment to tidyverse. Uh, just a second, why do I not have, let me. Okay, I don't have this screen. Do I have it now? Okay. 
Hmm. Okay, it's quite strange as I deleted some code to make the GitHub action work, but let me take this code from the actual repository. Let me see if Yes, so, okay. Let me update my code locally. Okay, part four. Okay, so uh, we load the libraries and um, we have our sort object that we are familiar with. And let's suppose we want to collapse the cells according with the sample and the cell types, okay? So for each sample and each cell type, we will have a, like if it was a tissue, uh, basically sample. And we want to get this from the uh, row counts. And what this operation will do is to uh, sum the transcription across genes for the, the cells I'm grouping, basically. So sampling and cell type pair and create a, a bulk data container. <clears throat> uh, now we see what this pseudo bulk object is. And we, we see that we, we went from, these aggregate cells will be available in tidy surat very soon. But basically we went from a surat object to a summarized experiment object very convenient. Summarize experiment contains bulk RNA sequencing data. Again, because we have loaded tidy summarize experiments, we are visualizing this as a data frame. Uh, however, internally is the same story, is the original object there. And the visualization is very similar to Surat. So we have our uh, I mean, very similar. There is some difference. We have our metadata here. However, for bulk data, because genes are very important in bulk, uh, the features are displayed for us in a long format. Uh, this is very convenient. If you start using, you understand why, but we have basically feature as if we did join feature in the single cell uh, with our RNA assay here. And you can see that we have some headers that tell us we have 3,000 genes, 123 so-called samples, and one assay, which is RNA. And we can do all operations as before. We can filter, uh, do so, so all sorts of things, and the underlying object will be updated for us. So we can forget we are interacting with this complex object. Um, just to show you that this will be rendered better in the website, uh, but uh, tidy bulk offers a wide variety of analysis that you can, some of those are in this list uh, and are most the, the common, you know, the scaling, redu uh, reduced dimension, clustering, uh, differential expression, deconvolution, survival analysis, and so on all done in a tidy uh, fashion. Now, I've uh, introduced before the nesting operation. This nesting operation is also useful in your bulk analysis. Let's say we have done differential expression before at the single level. Let's see uh, how we can perform differential expression at the bulk level. This differential expression, in our case, we want to do it at the across within cell types. So what we what we we do is to use the same syntax that we have used before with the nesting. In this case, applied to this bulk object, we are nesting based uh, on cell type and different object, but same story. So the syntax is. K 
keeps to be familiar. We don't need to learn new things. We have our curated cell types. And this column, instead of including a surat, including a summarized experiment. If I want to show you the first element, uh, that's what it is. We have uh, less samples uh, because uh, we are just looking at a subset of the data. Um, now, we can use MAP as before. We just need to change our pipeline to calculate differential expression. And with tidy bulk, this pipeline looks as user-friendly friendly as the Surat. So we are uh, inputting our summarized experiment, which now is .x. We uh, exclude lowly abundant features, and we call for this keep abundant. This is from tidy bulk. We test differential abundance using D6-2, and uh, we scale also, we produce explicitly scale counts for visualization. Hmm. Uh, so this will take maybe some time. Let me see. Ah, the font bigger. Whoops, sorry. I wasn't looking at the chat. Um, where am I? So again, we are now I'm updating my the variable, yeah. Uh, but we are creating a new. Yes, no. So we are updating the same column here. So we are updating the summarized experiment column with inputting the summarized experiment and do some operation on it. This operation includes filtering, testing, and scaling. Now, if we look at our object, uh, in this case, it looks exactly as before. However, this uh, object, this column has been updated. How has been updated? Well, if we look at the first element, for example, we can see that our summarized experiment not only includes the column that we were seeing before, but also now includes TMM scaling, the multiplier, and the statistics of our test, for example, fall change, uh, p-value, p-adjust, and so on. This is information related to genes. The beauty of this format is that we, we, we merge feature-related metadata, sample-related metadata, and counts all in one data frame as if each of them was a variable. So uh, again, we don't need to differentiate now anymore. We can do visualization and filtering based on combination of all those together. Uh, the last, I mean, we are uh, at the very end. Yes, the school really helps with the plotting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, so this long format is very, very good for plotting uh, among other things uh, as we can decide high aesthetics based on whatever we decide um, and combine, combine different uh, information. Okay, now we have done our differential expression analysis. What I'm doing now is the same thing I was doing before. Let's say we want to plot the top genes for each cell type. So we have done many analysis. We have 20 cell types. We have done 20 differential expression analysis. I want to plot the top gene or top genes for every cell type. So I take my nested data set and I add a new column, same thing as we've done before, which the significant genes. Uh, and because I'm taking just one gene, I'm just actually outputting a character, it's not anymore a list. I can show you now. And how I'm deriving this top gene, top feature, is um, I have my summarized experiment input. I take transcript information. This is all tidy bulk inside here. Uh, I arrange on p-value, select the first gene, and uh, pull that gene, so uh, extract the character out of it. 
I can show you, uh, I probably can show you this operation outside the map so you can see. Again, as I've done before, I pull this thing and I select the first element. So I just have this thing uh, with our, our statistics and so on. And let's apply this workflow. So when I pivot transcript, I just select transcript information. So uh, this function understand which is the transcript related, related information and outputs a table with now transcript as a main object and all my statistics. Yeah, I just have 1000 and something uh, transcripts. And so what I'm doing is arranging, uh, taking, uh, so ranking on p-value and taking the first gene. In this case, uh, me at is the first, is a top significant gene. I'm doing this for every cell. So how does this look? I'm creating a new column here with the top gene. Okay, I could have top gene or top three or whatever I want. Um, now I filter, <clears throat> I use this top gene to filter my original object just for that gene so I can plot the expression. So again, I use map two. This is very similar to what we've seen before. I input to column and update my old one. So I am updating my old column, input that column and top gene. And I'm using one to filter with the other. So Y to filter X. Uh, and uh, here I can execute the old chunk. So I update my object. And now the summarized experiment column will include just one gene. And the last thing is as before, I can plot this stuff. So I can add a new module that adds a plot column and applies a ggplot in there. You can explore that, but nonetheless, I will execute this. So uh, I'm creating a new column. Um, and I, um, in this case, I'm, I'm pulling all plots, but you can see here, that's my new data set with the plot column. And at the end, I'm pulling all plots. And you can see here the top genes for every cell type. Yeah? Again, very simple, very robust, and I didn't have to create any variables. So the possibility of bugs, because you haven't executed one line uh, and updated variable are very low. Okay, a lot of stuff, but uh, these, uh, that's why I put the material online so you can go back and read it for the next weeks or so. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. We have seen quite a lot of stuff, both for single cell and bulk. And uh, I will leave these last few minutes uh, for questions. And after that, that will be it. And so you guys was very good. Yeah, that's uh, true. This is could be a good teaching material. I think starting from tidy bulk, it gives the high level concepts first, and then you can investigate further. So it could, uh, it's for sure a, a software probably. It's, it doesn't focus so much on the coding or the nitty gritty. It just focus on the workflows and what you do. Can you explain the aggregation by sample cell type along with treatment? Trying to wrap my head around what would be relevant in my work. Well, um, so in this case, I want to, def I have single cell. I want to simplify this, uh, this data and I want to know, and I want to decide what to simplify across. What is my observational unit? 
A simple simplification could be forget about cell types. Suppose this is a simple is a tissue, and I just nest based on sample. I don't nest based on cell type. Okay, so um, for example, here I sorry when I when I create the pseudo bulk, yeah. I don't create the pseudo bulk according with sample and cell type. I might just create the pseudo bulk according with sample. So I just, this is a, a the same thing as a bulk RNA sequencing data. Um, so that's probably the simplest thing we can do. And we can do now differential expression across treatments. So that's your typical bulk analysis. But because now I have single cell experiment, I can divide in a finer way. For example, I want to do analysis per cell type. And so that's what I've done. Treatment in this case is just a covariate I use for testing. Uh, but again, these, you know, I, I would suggest execute this code, get a bit more familiar and, and, and you will quickly understand uh, what, uh, what applies to your work. Amazing. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. I hope you enjoyed and you took home something. Um, thanks a lot for all the questions and the participation. And uh, if you have questions, get in touch. I have my GitHub there. And if you want to contribute to these things, you can. Uh, we The community is growing. So for sure, participation is welcome. And hopefully see you very soon.